I was thinking I should write every day. People had talked about, you know, try to write every day, blah, 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 and I had never done it before. I had only followed inspiration. I had only followed, um, I'll write when I have an idea. And because of that, it was always a little bit pressured because I always felt like I should be writing and where are my ideas? And so I, I started, um, the first year I did an hour and a half and we would have sometimes meetings in the morning, so I was getting up early, it was not 3.30, <laughs> but it was six, which for me was early. So, so then I would write for like an hour and a half, and the very first time, and this is funny because you put a scarf on your door, the very first time that I wrote, I wanted to make a rule that I couldn't leave the chair, so I did put a little scarf around my leg and the chair. <laughs> but since then, people have come up to me. When I've told that story, they've come up and said like, do you still tie yourself to the chair? <laughs> And it was like an easy knot. I'm not like a knot. <laughs> but it was just a gesture to say, like, your job is just to sit here. Your job is just to sit here. And so in sitting there, um, it was a very, very interesting shift happened. Because, and someone asked me earlier, you know, what are the inspirations for your stories or your novels? And I think the truth is, much like I think failure and success have this very two sides of the same coin, kind of important rapport. I think inspiration's true friend is boredom. Um, as opposed to like going and you know, living the moment, that's important too. It's important to live your life and get inspired that way. But I think when you're actually trying to get writing done, what has helped me the most is cultivating boredom. So I'm there at the beginning of grad school, I'm there for an hour and a half. I'm sitting there, I get so bored. I have nothing to write, there's nothing to do, I have no ideas. And then I have to sit there and I have a little pad of paper with the, you know, time written on it. I started at 7, so it's 8.30 on the paper and I'm looking and it's only 7.42 and that's like 40 something more minutes. So what happened was I would just start making things up just to tolerate the time because I was so agitated at having to sit there. And everything got funnier, it got more active, it got, uh, something changed in the whole tone of what I was writing because of that structure. And I upped it to two hours a day, maybe a year later. And this was, at that point, six days a week. And that was 17 years ago, which is fascinating to me, because that's a long time. Um, but it has helped me so much to have that regularity. And there are many, 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 many days that I sit there with nothing to write. But that I think what has happened is that um, I've learned that if you wait out the time, eventually I will get bored enough that I'll start to make something up. And that that boredom, boredom being perhaps um, a bit of a rare commodity these days, and something instead of, something to cultivate. Um, there's a great essay by Adam Phillips, who's a British psychoanalyst, on um, boredom, and he says, uh, with boredom, the child is waiting for himself. So if we try to cultivate that space where you are actually waiting for yourself to show up, and it feels really bad because you're not there yet, um, maybe there's a way to cultivate that space so that you do show up, and that that has been enormously helpful for me in writing. And just interestingly, and this is just what I'm thinking about now, you know, I'm gonna be a parent, and that's gonna change. So I don't know what the new structure is gonna